World War II was marked with two great submarine campaigns. The German Navy used its U-boat fleet to attempt to deny Great Britain the war materials needed to continue the war. After the American entry into the war, the United States Navy carried out a submarine campaign against Japan, tasked with accomplishing the same goals against that island nation. Both sides practiced unrestricted submarine warfare. That meant submarines would torpedo ships of their enemies without warning. Both the Americans and the Germans produced submarine officers noted for exceptional skill and professionalism. The US Navy's submarines sunk over 5.5 million tons of Japanese shipping during the war. The German U-boats destroyed 4.1 million tons of Allied shipping over the course of the war as well, nearly 70% of all Allied losses for all theaters of the global conflict. Both services produced men with remarkable records of destruction inflicted on the enemy. Total ships and tonnage sunk vary according to sources, but here are the top 10 submarine aces of World War II. Number 10. Slade D. Cutter, 142,300 tons over 21 ships. Before he became a submarine ace in World War II's shipman, an all-American player in the Navy in the 1930s, Cutter was inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame in 1967. After graduating in 1935, he served on the battleship USS Idaho. He entered into the submarine service in 1936 and by 1941 was serving as the executive officer on the USS Pompano. After three war patrols on the submarine, he was assigned to a submarine still under construction USS Seahorse SS-304 as the executive officer. After Seahorse completed its first war patrol, its commanding officer was relieved for displaying a lack of aggression against the enemy. Cutter was assigned to command the vessel in October 1943. His four war patrols led to the sinking of over 142,000 tons of Japanese shipping, including an enemy submarine I-274. Contrary to Hollywood depictions, submarine-on-submarine attacks during the war were relatively few in number. Cutter remained in the Navy after the war, retiring as a captain in 1965. For his service in World War II, he received the Navy Cross, the service's second highest award for each of his four war patrols and seahorse. He never reached flag rank, according to some, because of his ill-concealed disdain for desk-bound senior officers, including Hyman Rickover, which eliminated him for consideration from command in the emerging nuclear navy. Number 9. Eugene Fluckley, 179,700 tons over 25 ships. Eugene Fluckley graduated from Annapolis in 1935 and began his career in submarines in 1938. The outbreak of World War II found him serving on the USS Bonita, in which he completed five war patrols before being assigned to command the USS Barb SS-220. Fluckley commanded the submarine during seven war patrols conducted between March 1944 and the end of the war in August 1945. On one occasion, Fluckley put a party of men ashore in the Japanese Haim Islands charged with the destruction of a train. As commanding officer of the USS Barb, Fluckley earned four Navy crosses and the Medal of Honor. Following an attack on a Japanese convoy in 1945, Barb set a record for speed in a submarine 23.5 knots as he withdrew from the pursuit of Japanese destroyers. He remained in the Navy following the war, retiring as a rear admiral in 1972. Known as Lucky Fluckley, he wrote a well-received book about the war patrols aboard Barb in 1992 called Thunder Below. Fluckley commanded Barb when it became the first submarine to deploy rockets against the enemy, bombarding targets in Japan in June and July 1945. He thus helped usher in an entirely new use of the submarine in warfare. Today's nuclear submarines carry both ballistic missiles and cruise missiles for use against targets on both land and sea. Number 8. Heinrich Lemon Willenbrock, 183,253 tons over 25 ships. Among the four U boats commanded by Heinrich Lemon Willenbrock during World War II was U 96. U 96 was the later subject of the film Das Boot. During his three patrols in U-96, Lehman Willenbrock sank over 120,000 tons of mostly British shipping, including three troop ships. Primarily operating out of the submarine pens at Brest, St. Nazaire, Lehman Willenbrock rose to command the 9th U-boat flotilla. In September 1944, as Allied troops threatened to capture Brest, Lehman Willenbrock assumed command of U-256 and escaped to Norway, despite the overwhelming air and naval superiority of the Allies. Lehman Willenbrock surrendered to the British in 19. He held him captive for a year before he returned to Germany. He was then returned to the sea, serving in and commanding merchant vessels. When the German merchant vessel and icebreaker Otto Hahn, a nuclear-powered ship, became operational in 1969, it was he who commanded it. He served as a consultant during the filming of Das Boot, in which Jürgen Prochnow played the unnamed commander of U-96 during a war patrol in 1941. Lehman Willenbrock served in operational U-boats throughout the war from 1939 to 1945. That he survived is remarkable, given the casualty rate suffered by that branch of the service. He died in Bremen, the city of his birth, 
on April the 18th, 1986. Number 7. Herbert Schultz, 183,482 tons over 28 ships. On September the 11th, 1939, a German U boat transmitted a radio message addressed to First Lord of the Admiralty, Winston Churchill. The message informed him of the sinking of the British merchant ship Furby, giving its last position, and requested they pick up survivors in the ship's boats. A few days later, the U boat, commanded by Herbert Schultz, stopped another British vessel. He let the ship continue on its way, provided it rescued the survivors from Furby, and did not radio the position of his ship. It was an act of chivalry unmatched in a campaign of unrestricted submarine warfare. Schultz commanded U-48 on eight war patrols from September 1939 until July 1941. After his stunning successes at sea, he served in staff positions, eventually commanding the Merwick Naval School. He remained in that assignment until the war's end. He eventually returned to active duty with the West German Navy in 1956, retiring in 1968. During his relatively brief service as an active U-boat commander, he achieved one of the highest success rates of the war. He also achieved a level of notoriety within the German High Command for his complaints regarding manufacturing defects, which produced numerous failures in German torpedoes. Health issues plagued Schultz as well. For whatever reason, from July 1941 through to the end of the war, one of Germany's best U-boat commanders remained ashore, an immeasurable benefit for the Allies. Number 6. Heinrich Lieb, 187,267 tons over 34 ships. When World War II began in September 1939, Heinrich Lieb was one of the most experienced U boat officers in the service. In command of U 38, he claimed his first victim on September the 6th. From that date until June 1941, he sank 34 Allied ships, all of them merchantmen, reaching a total of nearly 190,000 tons. By the summer of 1941, Lieb was among the most highly decorated German U boat commanders. He was also among the most senior, both in terms of service and rank. As more and more U-boats left German shipyards, the men to command them were younger and less experienced. In July 1941, Lieb left U-38 for a staff position with the German Naval High Command. His nine war patrols, all of which were successful, comprised a total of 333 days at sea. On average, he sank an Allied ship every 10 days during an at-sea war career of 21 months. On his last patrol alone from April to June 1941, he sank eight ships for over 47,000 tons. As with Heinrich Lieb, his promotion to a staff position was a blessing for the Allies. Number 5. Gunther Prien, 194,103 tons over 31 ships. Gunther Prien was the author of a submarine exploit of legendary proportions. In October 1939, under orders from Rear Admiral Karl Donitz, he took his submarine into Scarpa Flow, the main anchorage of the Royal Navy's home fleet. There, he sank the British battleship Royal Oak, which carried over 800 men to their deaths and successfully eluded detection while escaping. When Prien returned to Germany on October the 17th, it was to instant celebrity. He became the first U-boat commander to be awarded the Knight's Cross or the Iron Cross. The German propaganda ministry called him the Bull of Scarpa Flow. Prien had an image of a snorting bull painted on the conning tower of U-47. Even Winston Churchill acknowledged his attack as a feat of professional skill and daring. By February 1941, Prien had completed nine war patrols with 29 ships sunk. On the 10th, Prien was lost at sea after another two sinkings to his credit. The official cause of his loss has never been determined. Prien is a controversial character with some calling him an unrepentant and fervid Nazi, while others claiming he supported the German resistance. His war career lasted 18 months, making him one of the most successful submarine aces of the war. Number 4. Eric Topp, 197,460 tons, over 35 ships. Eric Topp commanded four different U-boats during the Second World War. The first, U-57, sank after colliding with a Norwegian freighter. Norway was neutral at the time, in September 1940. Topp had been in command just three months and already had credit for six sinkings. He then assumed command of a new construction, U-552. On October 31, 1941, Topp and U-552 were in patrol in the North Atlantic when they encountered the U.S. Navy destroyer Reuben James. Although the United States was officially neutral, Topp attacked and sank Reuben James when the American ship approached the submarine. Only 44 of the 159 men on board the destroyers survived. Reuben James was the first American ship sunk by enemy action during World War II. Later in 1942, Top sank several ships off the east coast of the United States in sight of land in many cases. It was a period which the U-boat skippers called the second happy time as sinkings of Allied ships increased with America's entry into the war. Top was promoted into staff jobs in late 1942, having completed nine war patrols, sinking nearly three dozen ships. He returned to command two additional U-boats in late winter 1945, though neither completed a patrol. Post-war positions included a commission into the West German Navy and with NATO. He also served as a consultant for the computer game Silent Hunter 2. He died in Germany in 2005 
at the age of 91. Number 3. Wolfgang Luth, 221,981 tons, over 47 ships. Wolfgang Luth completed his first war patrol in 1939 as first officer under Heinrich Lieb. In December of that year, Luth received command of U-9. While in command of that U-boat, he attacked and sank a surfaced French submarine Doris off the coast of Holland. In 1940, he took command of U-138, with which his sinkings continued to increase, reaching well over 55,000 tons by autumn. Luth later commanded U-43 and later U-181. In 1943, he departed on patrol in the Indian Ocean and along South Africa, which ultimately lasted 205 days, the second longest patrol of any submarine during World War II. In total, this completed 15 war patrols, surviving depth charges by escort ships, bombing and strafing runs by enemy aircraft, and bombardment by armed merchant ships. He logged over 600 days at sea during the war. In 1944, he assumed new duties at Merwick, and he remained there when the British occupied the area in May 1945. On the evening of May the 15th, he was returning to the academy after drinking drinking heavily in local bars, a sentry called out for him to halt. Either Luth did not hear the German sentry's challenge or was just too drunk to obey it, and the sentry shot him once in the head. The occupying British authorities allowed the Germans to give Luth a state funeral. The sentry was cleared of any wrongdoing by both British and German authorities. Number 2. Richard O'Kane, 227,824 tons over 33 ships. Richard H. O'Kane served in 10 war patrols in the Pacific during World War II. In five, he was the executive officer of USS Wahoo under Dudley Mush Morton. Subsequently, he commanded USS Tang on five more. O'Kane assumed command of Tang in October 1943. Before the submarine sank via a vaulty torpedo, it destroyed 33 Japanese ships. It also served as a lifeguard during aerial operations. On one such mission, Tang rescued 24 American airmen. In October 1944, Tang was involved in a night surface action when one of his Mark 18 torpedoes went on a circular run. Unable to evade, Tang was struck by the faulty weapon and sank. Only nine men survived, including O'Kane, and were taken prisoner by the Japanese. O'Kane was held for a time at Afuna without notification to the Red Cross that he was a prisoner. Later, he was transferred to Amura Prisoner of War Camp. Among his fellow prisoners was Greg Pappy Boyington of the Black Sheep Squadron. Richard O'Kane remains in the Navy following the war, retiring in 1957. Among the many legends surrounding his career is his prowess at the game of cribbage. O'Kane is said to have once scored a 29 in one hand against odds of more than 200,000 to 1. His personal cribbage board is assigned to the wardroom of the oldest attack submarine in the US fleet to this day. Number 1. Otto Kretschmer, 274,333 tons, over 44 ships. Otto Kretschmer reigns as the ace of aces for submarine warfare. His career of destruction in the Atlantic began in 1939. His early patrols were short in number of days at sea and relatively unsuccessful. By early 1940, he had developed his preferred means of attack. Kretschmer chose to attack while surfaced whenever possible, at night, and by firing just one torpedo at each target rather than salvos. In April 1940, Kretschmer took command of U-99. When possible, he took U-99 inside the enemy convoys, allowing him to attack in any direction before diving the boat to escape. In September 1940, Kretschner completed his 15th war patrol. In March 1941, he attacked a convoy escorted by British destroyers. It was part of the same action which cost the Germans Gunther Prien. Kretschner's attacks sank five ships and forced the abandonment of another, which was destroyed by the escorts, but the severity of the British depth charging forced Kretschner to surface his ship, signal it was sinking, and order his crew to abandon ship. U-99 was scuttled by the Germans, and Kretschner became prisoner of war. After being held in Britain for some time for interrogation, he spent the rest of the war in a prisoner of war camp in Canada. He was released on December 31, 1947 and returned to West Germany. In 1955, he joined the West German Navy. He worked with NATO, retiring in 1970 with the rank of Admiral. Ironically, Otto Kretschmer died following an accident on a boat where he fell down some steps, suffering fatal injuries. He was 86, and he was on a cruise, celebrating his 50th wedding anniversary.